Isotropy or anisotropy. Analyzing the semivariogram in different directions. In the lesson 6 and 7 of the third geostatistic course, we was talking about geometric and zonal anisotropy. What we saw in those lessons is if we want to analyze the isotropy of the data, we can use a couple of tools. One of them is the variography, also known as a variogram map, and the other one is the experimental semivariogram in four different directions. And that's what we are going to see now. First, let's go to see the variography. Remember that the script for the variography was created at the lesson 6 of the third geostatistic course and is the script number 29. Then let's go to open that script. 29 is over here. Double click to open. Let's go to select the vector uh, layer. This one. The parameter is going to be this one. The cutoff is going to be 300,000. The lag distance 30,000. The a label X is going to be the direction uh, west est. The label Y is going to be the direction south-north. For the title of the graph, we are going to add variogram map. And for the subtitle, it's going to be log 10 transformation. And the legend is going to be log 10 for the air quality index then we can run and double click to open now we can make this screen bigger what we can see in this variogram map is that we have one direction where the semivariance is pretty constant and it's lower than 0 0.1. And this direction is this one, 135 degrees. Then we can consider that this direction is the direction of anisotropy. Then if we make an angle, a perpendicular angle to the direction of anisotropy, this direction is going to be this one over here and it's going to be 45 degrees. And for 45 degrees, we can see that the, the semi-variance uh, is increasing from values pretty low to the highest values in, to the highest values in this range, from here to here, as you can see. Now let's go to see this information uh, with the experimental semi-variogram. To do that one, we are going to use the script number 17 for the lesson fourth of the third geostatistic course. Then number 17 is this script over here, fourth direction, experimental semivariogram. Then double click to open, select the layer, it's going to be this one. The parameter of interest is this one. The cutoff, we are going to use the same values. The tolerance angle, in this case, we are going to put 22.5. If you don't know about what uh, tolerance angle you have to use, just check uh, the videos for the third year statistic course. The lag distance is going to be 30,000. Label X is going to be the lag distance in meters. Label Y is going to be the semi-variance of the log 10 for the equality index. The title of the graph is going to be experimental semi-variogram in different directions. And for the subtitle is going to be log 10 transformation. I'm going to add all these labels, but I'm going to pass the video faster. I added all the labels. Now I'm going to run this script. Double click to open and let's go to make this screen bigger. And as you can see here, we have experimental semi-variogram for uh, four different directions. That is zero degrees, 45, 90 and 135. Here you have the legend with the bin direction 
and for each color we have the directions over here direction and for each color we have the directions over here here we have the semi variance for the log 10 for the equality index and here we have the lag distance in meters remember that this graph is um, making the representation the same as this one here okay if we, we have a direction of 135 is this direction over here that's the values that we are going to have for the semi variance and it's the same values that we can get here for 135 degrees okay these values are the semi variance over here and it's the same information that we can see on the variogram map for example for 45 degrees we have the values that are for the semi variance are increasing then reach the maximum value over here and then gets down and that's the same that we are going to see here right if we take an angle of 45 degrees we are going to see that the values are increasing 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 and then when they reach over here they go down that's the same that we can see in this graph what we can see is that the the direction of uh, anisotropy is this one 135 degrees because is where we have the lowest value for the semi variance at 135 degrees and then the perpendicular direction is 45 degrees and is this green and as you can see these two uh, experimental semi variograms looks like they are showing in different seals right for the 135 degrees the seal is going to be around 0 0.05 as you can see over here and um, for the 45 degrees is the value for the partial seal is going to be uh, higher than 0 0.10 maybe it's going to be something over here right and that one it's indicating that what we have here is a sonar anisotropy for the has the same range okay then is a case when we can talk about poor uh, sonar anisotropy where we have the same range but different partial seals or even different seals right However, if we want to work with directional experimental semivariograms, we have to make sure that each experimental semivariogram has a good representative for its lag distance. Because now what we are using is a limitation on the tolerance angle, and then we have less uh, data points to make the representation of the experimental semivariogram and even here it's pretty clear that we have uh, sonal anisotropy if the experimental semivariogram in in a specific direction is not well represented for the lag distance uh, lag distance or for the lag points then that experimental semivariogram it's it's not good right and maybe we don't have uh, sonar anisotropy and we are making a bad inter interpretation because the experimental semivariogram it's not well represented okay and that's what we are going to see now to do that one we are going to use the script number 14 for the experimental semivariogram then first we are going to do for a direction of uh, 45 degrees then it's going to be this one the cutoff we are going to use the same values as before 300,000 the beam angle is going to be 45 degrees the tolerance angle as I said before is going to be 22.5 this one it's a big restriction for the data before we was using all the data to do the omnidirectional semivariogram but now we are using this restriction that's pretty important the lag distance is going to be 30,000 and for the the x we are going to use the same as this one copy paste over here for y is going to be the same copy paste here for the title in this case is going to be experimental semi variogram for a 45 degrees and subtitle is going to be the same log 10 transformation copy and paste and with this script we are going to see if the lag distance the number of pair of uh, samples we have it's representative okay then if we make double click to open make this screen bigger and as you can see now the number of pairs 
for each lag distance, it changes a lot, right? Contains a lot, right? Compared with the omnidirectional uh, semi variogram. Because, for example, here we have even less than 100, and all these points over here, they are also less than 100, and maybe they are not representative, right? Then we have a, a false um, partial seal or seal in this case, because here the data is pretty poor. And that's the problem when we are working with uh, directional uh, semi-variograms. As you can see on the map, when we are using a direction of 45 degrees, we don't have too much data in this direction. Right? 45 degrees. Most of the data has in a 135 degrees, as you can see. But for a 45 degrees, the data is pretty poor. Then we can do the same and we can do the same analysis, but in this case we can add sorry, is this one? 135 degrees. In that direction, here, in direction 135, in that direction, the experimental semivariogram is going to be better because as I said, we have more data points in that direction, right? 135, then run this script. And then double click to open, make the screen bigger. And as you can see, even that one is pretty short, but for these ones, we have more than, than 100 uh, pair of samples, right? Then for 135, it's, uh, the estimation is better, but for 45 degrees, it's, it's quite poor because of all this uh, lag distance over here and also this one. Here, the only one it's not really good is this one. Then as a conclusion, in this case, we can say that for 135 degrees, we can estimate well the experimental semi variogram because we have a good pair of samples for each uh, lag distance, less for this one. But for a 45 degrees, we cannot estimate well the experimental semi -variogram. Then in this case, it's not recommended to use the directional ones to, to do the, the model, you know, because in this case, we cannot estimate well the, this experimental semi -variogram. Also, you have to be aware that if you want to make a model that is related with sonal anisotropy, it is uh, pretty complex and it requires to do the experimental semi variogram in three different directions x uh, z then it's going to be a 3d 3d experimental semi variogram and it's not going to be part of this course because that it's a pretty advanced level on the geostatistic in the analysis of experimental semi variograms However, at the lesson uh, six and seven of the third year statistic course, we was working with the Muse River data set. And what we saw there is that we have uh, something that is mixed between geometric and sonal anisotropy. And we was doing some things, you know, we was working a little bit on the sonal anisotropy and also on the geometric anisotropy. Then if you want to get more information, just uh, check that uh, videos over there. But for this lesson, we are not going to use the directional experimental semi variograms. We are going to work just with the omnidirectional experiment.